and of all mankind of what God did for us in his grace. The Bible says that God made mankind originally, that first man and that first woman, in that garden for his own glory and for his own pleasure. They were there for him. He was not there for them. But did man obey God? No. Does man now realize that we are created for God's purpose and, and uh, obey him and submit our lives to him? Do we live pure and obedient and focused on our creator? And the truth is, no. No, we turn everyone, the Bible says, to his own way. We do what we want to do, even if it dishonors God, our creator. In fact, listen, we live as if God is not even there. And most of mankind and most of America and most of Newark, people, you and I live our days as if God is not even there in our day. But God, even though every one of us have this attitude of seeking our own way from even a, a little baby up, I have five children, and I never had to teach one of them how to sin. I never had, never had to tell one of them, hey, I'm going to teach you how to lie. I didn't have to do that. I didn't have to say, I'm going to teach you how to deceive me. No, from a young age, the Bible says that we, were, that we were created in iniquity, that we had a sin nature from our birth even, from our mother's womb, the Bible says. And we go our own way, and we choose to go away directly from what God has created us for, for His purpose. But yet, seeing that attitude, God in His own grace, in His own love, He reached out in His own desire, in His own love that came totally from Him, not as a response from something from us. He reached out and restored us and offers an opportunity to be restored to him as friend, as God, as father. And heaps kindness on us because of Jesus Christ and his rescue mission for us on the cross. But I want to tell you, friends, it cost him a great deal to do it. It wasn't something that just came because God decided one day, hey, I'm going to save anybody and take them to heaven, whoever wants to. No, it cost him a great price. And that was his own son. His own son had to die in her place. God. Notice Mephibosheth's identity. Think about this guy. Who was this guy? He was the grandson of a former, former enemy of David, as I told you. And it wasn't just any rival. Let me tell you about his grandfather. Let me tell you what he was like. David, you know, the one that's king now, was standing in his court one day, minding his own business. In fact, he was playing music for the king to soothe, you know, his stressed out heart. And you know what King Saul does, who is the grandfather of Mephibosheth? There's a spear sitting against a wall or somewhere, a javelin. He picks it up and he whips it at David. Not only once, he does it more than once. He tries to kill him. At one place he hunts him and David has to, to hide in caves. I mean, this was a, an arch enemy of David. And that makes Mephibosheth's identity all the worse. This was his grandson. If anybody had a grudge, a right to a family grudge, it was David. He should have viewed Mephibosheth as a, an enemy. He should have viewed him as someone that he needed to take care of and get out of the way or at least banish. Beyond this, the Bible says here that Mephibosheth was lame. You know, we have great compassion towards this. And as we read it, we don't quite understand the same feeling here of how it's mentioned over and over that he was lame. Even, even the last couple of verses, the last phrase of verse 13 mentions it again that he was lame. At, the, at this time, this culture, in that ancient culture, if you were lame, it was looked on as a curse from God. You were looked on, you were hidden away. There weren't these hospitals that had any hope of making you right. You were certainly not in the king's table. You are pushed away. Lame people were considered worthless many times in a very low class. It shouldn't have been, but that's how it was. Paupers without any standing in society. And you see this word lame repeated here because God, the author, wants us to understand that this guy shouldn't be, be sitting at the king's table. He shouldn't have been one that was respected and heaped kindness upon and love and grace upon by the king. He was in a very low condition. He was in a place of weakness that could do nothing for himself. He was lame. There's no reason why David should have reached out to Mephibosheth. And there's no reason, frankly, that God should reach out to mankind. There is no reason the true God that made everything so beautiful, that made the sun and, and the stars and the planets and snow, I'm sorry, I have to say that. It's amazing if it would come down just a little at a time, not big snow, right? The God who did all that, who made not one snowflake the same, who is, has the power to make every snowflake different, there is no reason why God, when some puny little race called mankind turned away from him, why he should ever show us love and grace. In our fallen condition, you and I know ourselves. If you're honest with yourself, you do things that offend God every day, and so do I. 
There's no reason why God would ever or should ever show grace. What is our identity to him? <clears throat> the way he sees us is often different than the way we see ourselves. I want to think good of myself. You want to think good of yourself. Please look with me on the screen up here about how God sees us. Listen to God. He said in Romans 3 and verse 10 through 18, As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. He's talking about mankind. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are altogether become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Look up here. That is like their throat. The things that they say and what comes out of them is like an open grave. Wow, that's God's perspective of you and of me. With their tongues they have used deceit. We lie all the time. The poisons of asp is under their lips. Talking about a snake, like poison. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are, are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now listen, that is some strong accusation towards me, this preacher, and towards you. And we're all under this boat. If you looked at the verses, all of us, God says, all of us are in this condition. We can't see the sin and rebellion sometimes of our own heart against God. But the problem is God can see it. God knows who you are in the dark. God knows the motivations of your heart. God sees right through you as if you're a, a piece of clear glass. He knows everything about you. Modern culture sets you up. Have you ever seen some of these, uh, some of these advertisements? You deserve it. You ought to go get this shampoo because you deserve it. What? <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I don't deserve, you know, even shampoo, all right? Modern uh, culture sets you up as the God of your own life, that you answer only to yourself. But God says, look at this, he is God. And he says that you're accountable to him. He made you. He sustains you. He gives you the next breath that you're going to, to breathe. He makes your heart pump. We are accountable to him. Consider Colossians 1 and verse number 21. What God thinks of us, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind uh, by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. What were we? What are we? Left to ourselves without the grace of God, without Jesus, we are alienated and enemies of God. Now listen, in our own mind, our own culture, we got this whole thing going like he's got the whole world in his hand, like we're all God's children. And those people who don't want to tell you the truth are going to preach that to you. But I want to tell you the truth of the word of God. This is direct verses. Don't believe me? That's Colossians 1.21. You can look it up in any Bible. But without God's grace and without Jesus Christ, we are alienated and enemies of God. We are not his friends. We are not born his friends. Jesus was so bold to tell some religious people of his day that they were children of the devil. Wow, that is not politically correct. But it is the truth. We are outcasts, just like Mephibosheth, and as enemies of the king. The Bible teaches with many verses that we're alienated from God our creator, creator because of our sin and our violations against his many commands. And we will forever be alienated in all of eternity under the wrath of God in a real place called the lake of fire, in a real hell. You say you believe in a real hell? Doesn't believe, matter if I believe or not. This book believes it. God believes it. And God made a real place called hell and in a real place called heaven. You say, I don't believe that I'm wicked and I don't believe that God would judge me. I'm pretty good. All right, that's a fair statement. And I think that you are pretty good compared to me or compared to the guy beside you. I'm not doubting and compared to that, but why don't you compare yourself to a perfectly holy God? Why don't you compare yourself to the things that he said? Well, let's just choose one. Let's choose the most well-known list of, uh, of commands, the Ten Commandments, that he gave as a standard to show us that we are not holy, that we are not good. Let's, let, let me compare you to that, okay? Now, God, if he said them, he obviously meant them, okay? You can't just scoot them away. So let's look. If you look up on the screen, here, here is a, a list of the Ten Commandments. Let me ask you this. Have you ever, number one, put any gods or priority over the true God, anything above God? Number two? Have you ever worshipped other gods other than Jehovah? I met a Buddhist last night, okay? You say, well, I'm, I'm not there. I'm not that. Well, number, th number three, have you ever taken the Lord's name in, in vain? Have you ever said, oh, my God? Have you said, oh, my Lord? Have you thrown out his, his name in a way that is just vain or empty? Okay, it's one of his commands. Have you always kept the Lord's day holy and set aside a day just for God? Have you disrespected your parents? Have you ever disrespected your parents? 
All right, we are eliminating anyone who can say that they, they, they live this list or that they are perfect.